गुड मॉर्निंग एंड थैंक यू फॉर शोइंग अप ऑन सैटरडे मॉर्निंग Uh, we were discussing uh, telegrams theorem and uh, uh, internet to complete reciprocity in the last class itself but we ran out of time so what i'll do i'll uh, use telegrams theorem to prove reciprocity and then we'll move on to y parameters and two port networks from where we took the segue so uh, let me quickly recap what telegrams theorem is it essentially says that if you have two networks okay, Uh, in the same graph this is the only constraint no other constraint summation of pk ik hat over all k is equal to summation of pk hat ik over all k is equal to 0 right where yeah so this essentially is the definition of telegram's theorem the other two bk ik and ik hat ik hat summation are zero that is obvious so we 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 need not write them explicitly so uh, as you already know let's have I mean, what is reciprocity let's assume that we have a we have a network and this is linear <laughs> is also linear so can you help me with the uh with the statement of reciprocity i mean if i have the same network what does this reciprocity state pardon okay single source so tell me what should i do let's say i want to experimentally verify reciprocity works or not what should i do okay i connect the source on the left hand side okay and there will be register okay so that so essentially what she is saying is i mean the true form i mean the actual form of it is if i short this and i will get some current here let me call it i2 Uh, or other I S. Let me call it I two because four two, right? And if this is V one, and if I do the reverse here, I connect V one here, I will get I two I two here, right? Yeah. So I wanted to understand if you know the uh, definition of it. What? Experimentally, if I have to figure out whether reciprocity works or not, what is the setup? Okay, so there is one caveat here. Uh, is linearity sufficient for this? We'll see. As it turns out, only linearity is not sufficient for reciprocity. There is one more condition that in that in the in the in this format that I have uh, expressed. Linearity is the only not is not the only sufficient not the not sufficient requirement. Okay, so why do I say so? So so Telegram theorem will help uh, make the point. So let's assume these. I mean, obviously these two are identical networks, and these are made up of components R, L, Cs, and whatever linear elements that you are that you. Uh, Are aware of, including control sources, right? Control sources are also linear. So let me call this the kth network, or uh, this is let me call this the normal network, and this is the hatted network, right? So what I'll do, I'll first I'll have to ensure I have to mark some the voltage and the currents. The voltage in voltage and the currents on the terminals are marked, but I have to so express this as I one. and let's say i express this as let me call this v1 hat i shouldn't call this v1 hat this is other terminal right let me call this v2 hat 
and let's see i2 hat so essentially i want to develop a relationship or establish a relationship between v1 i1 i2 and v2 hat i2 hat i1 hat right so how will telegrams help us we'll simply we'll simply use this condition to marry the conditions of the two networks so what is what does this condition tell us this condition essentially tells us i will take i will just rewrite the same thing i will take the voltages on the network on the left of the kth branch and i will multiply with the current in the kth branch in the network on the right and sum it over all case and receive and telegrams says us says that this is exactly equal to the voltage on the left branch on the right branch times sorry voltage on the right uh, voltage across a branch in the right hand circuit times the current through the same branch on the left hand circuit so this is what is by definition of telegrams so now what i'll do is i will distinguish this entire vk ik into two parts that is i will i already know the port characteristics i i by definition i i know what is view uh, what are the currents going into the ports and what are the voltages across the ports i will write the port characteristics separately and i will say that the summation of all the other vk are within some summation okay so so let's do the port first <coughs> so in the circuit on the left if i start with port 1 i get v1 times the current that i am that is flowing be consistent with the directions v1 times the current that is flowing into the same port in the circuit on the right right the hat hat network that is i1 hat plus i will do the same thing for port 2 for port 2 the voltage across port 2 in in the circuit on the left is let's say this is network a this is network b so what is the voltage across port 2 in network a zero so doesn't matter what you have on the circuit on the network b right so this is zero plus summation of all vk ik where k is inside the network right k is in circuit network this is equal to this is equal to the same thing on the right hand side right so i'll start with again with uh, port 1 so so the voltage across port 1 in the hat head network is zero the voltage across port 2 in the hat head network is v2 hat times the current in port 2 in the pardon sorry i can hat thank you uh, uh yeah so now uh, okay so yeah so now here we have the voltage uh, across port 2 in the hat head network times the current in port 2 in the network in the a right so that is i2 plus summation of all pk hat ik where k is inside the network inside the box rather right so inside the box okay so now as you see that there is some i mean reciprocity helps us to develop a relationship between these two terms but we have these basically this summation of some things which are coming into coming into the picture so we have to do something about them so here that condition that i mentioned about it, linearity is not the only con only condition that needs to be satisfied comes into picture and the condition is because let's assume that you have an element in i mean each element in the normal network and the hat head network 
has a current voltage relationship, right? Each element has a current voltage relationship. Actually, so this is K. So, sorry, this is VK. If the current voltage relationship of this network uh, through this element is related as VK equal to ZK times IK, that is if a current through this is IK. If this, this is satisfied, right? If this is satisfied, then something interesting happens. And what is that? Notice that if this condition is true, then summation of VK IK hat, where K is in the box, becomes, I replace this VK with ZK IK times IK hat. Fine. And note that I have the same elements on the network on the right, on the hatted network, right? So on the in the hatted network, if I have the same elements, what is the relationship of VK hat and IK hat? Will be VK hat will be equal to ZK times IK hat. Right? So, which essentially means that this the other summation that is VK hat times IK summation over all K goes to <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> Does it matter if it's a steady state? So, in transient, if it is transient, then we won't be able to make it work. Why not? So in that case, if it's a transient, you rate, you uh, you do Laplace, right? When you are doing uh, when you do Laplace, you replace the capacitor with its impedance one over S C. Again, it's a linear relationship between Z and T uh, and I. Yes. Why is VK not a VK hat? Okay, so these two elements are these two networks are same networks. So if if I I have essentially taken the network and changed this terminal conditions. So these two networks are identical, right? These two are identical networks. So now what you see, now things become obvious. Now I'll revisit this and I'll revisit this equation, this, right? So what essentially happens is that your VK IK hat and VK hat IK becomes equal because of these two equalities. Make sense? So let me rewrite, let me rewrite. So essentially what I'm saying is V1 I1 hat plus summation of VK IK hat. So this VK IK hat becomes V2 hat. Oh, no, I mistake. Okay, fine. So this is V2 I V2 hat I2, right? Yeah. Plus summation of VK hat IK, summation over all K. Now note that these two are identical, so they go off. Which essentially means that V1 I1 hat becomes equal to V2 hat times I2. Okay. So note that in order for reciprocity to be valid in the conditions that we know, it's not only linearity is sufficient, we need to ensure that this relationship is also valid. If you have a voltage control current source or a current control voltage source or whatever control sources you have, this relationship is not necessarily valid because the voltage across its terminals or the current through, its, through, through the source is not particularly dependent on the voltage of the currents across those terminals. It's dependent on something that is happening somewhere else. Since it is something that is happening somewhere else, you cannot establish this relationship between its own terminal voltages and the currents 
that is going through the through the through the element. So that is why when you are applying reciprocity, you have to ensure that there are no control sources inside. In this truest sense, okay. Sir, yes. Right. So the network inside doesn't have any independent source. Yes. I do not understand from uh, the line BK, IK, at IK, how you obtain the line below. This one? This one was not obtained here, right? This was obtained here. Right? So I just read out. So I, this is a, this. How you cancel the two? Ah, okay. How I cancel the two? Okay. So let me take one more step. So what is VK times IK hat? VK times IK hat is this. And what is VK hat times IK? This is this. These two are same. Because of the of the linear relationship between the current and the voltages of all the elements inside the box. That is what that is enabling us to cancel those extra summations. Right? So till here is quite generic, but in order to cancel the extra summations inside the box, a particular relationship needs to be satisfied. And that is the fact that you have to have a linear relationship between the currents and voltages across a particular device that is inside the box. You have a question? Okay. Yes. So why can't we have no Ah, so if you have a source in the circuit, you cannot have this is not valid. Right. If we have a source only an incremental analysis, we can apply it. Uh okay. So if you have so essentially, even in incremental analysis, you cannot have a source inside. If you have a source inside, this relationship is not valid. So you have to take all the sources out. Once you take the sources out, you can have n number of terminals and then you can work out these, which terminal you want to short, which terminal you want to open. So you can work out what those things out. Now, this is only one of the expression, one of the uh, conditions that relate the terminal voltages and currents. Now that you know this trick, you should be able to now say that I will maybe open one terminal, close another terminal, and then try to figure out what is the relationship because because ultimately what are essentially we are what we are trying to do we are trying to establish the relationship between the ports but we have two ports which means i have four combinations of currents and voltages four terms that will come we have to ensure two terms go to zero right here we ensure two terms are going to zero if two terms go to zero i am left with all the summation terms which can be satisfied using if I that they will anyway be equal if I establish a linear relationship between the voltage and the currents inside the network. So they, we don't have to bother about that. So all you need to do is set up the network in such a way that you are left with two terms in the summation, right? One 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 term will be voltage in one port, current in another port, other will be voltage in another port and the current in one another port. But there will be two other cases, right? Two voltages to Two currents, two, you end up with four, four, four terms out of which two you have to cancel. So you have to manufacture the setup in such a way that either maybe the current is zero or the voltage is zero. So in this case, I shorted one of the terminals to make the voltage zero. So whatever is there in the other terminal will, will not matter. So similarly, you can set up a network where you open, right? You open so that the current becomes zero. And then the uh, then the voltage across the other terminal will not be required. Yes. Okay. So so what I'm trying to uh, what I'm trying to say here is that this is not the only form of reciprocity. Okay. Why? Because if you know this trick, if you know that what is the essentially what 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 did we essentially do? We it's a two port network. You have across the port, if you only see the ports, you have voltages and current in one port, voltage and current in other port. So when you are multiplying these two, we have four combinations between the ports and plus whole junk, which is inside the network. Now let's assume that the whole junk inside the network I can cancel by assume by doing this uh, VKIK equal to VKIK hat, right? So VK times IK hat equal to VK hat times IK because I of the linear relationship between the uh, currents and the voltages inside the box. 
So we are only left with four terms to deal with. Out of the four terms, if I have to establish relationship between currents and voltages across the force, I have to cancel two. So how do I cancel two? In experimental setup, how do you cancel two? You have to, um, each of these terms are either voltages times current. So either you can set voltage to zero or you set current to zero, which means either you have to short a port or open a port. Okay, so, okay, so let me, let me, uh, express it in another way. So if these terms were not zero, right, then I wouldn't have been able to express the, res I mean, the reciprocity in the form that we understand, right? I will have four terms which I'll have to pedal with, right? So for example, I say that I apply V1 here and I apply I2 there. And if I apply uh, uh, I here and I am trying to observe V here, then I will have problems because these two zeros will not, not be zero. So using that setup, you will not be able to come up with the same conclusion. So the setup matters, right? So what I'm telling you is that this is, this the conclusion that we got is particular to this setup. You can change the setup in such a way that two of these terminal relationships go to zero. So we will we'll end up with two other terminals, two other uh, terms, which will also have some interdependency, right? For example, I can say I have V1, V1, V2, and I have I1, I2. In one network, I put V1 in one port and V2 in another port. Other network, I put I1 in one port, I2 in another port. Will I be able to establish relationships? Maybe yes, maybe no. I leave it up to you to figure out. So you can, uh, so, so the po key point here is that once you know how to get things done, you can play around with the setup, you can play around with the variables and then come up with different relationships. Also, I will not go into that here. There is another extension of this reciprocity that we call inter-reciprocity. In that case, we can modify this network in some way to make sure that even if you have control sources inside, I can establish a relationship. So uh, not a part of this course, I will not go there, but for the, for the, uh, uh, for the sake of completion of, on the subject, at least for the definition part of the subject of reciprocity, I'd like to uh, make you aware of the fact that there's this thing called inter-reciprocity, where the, you can establish a relationship between these two networks, but you have to do some modifications. And the modifications have to be done inside this box. Not, not only on the terminals. So if you are interested, drop me an email, I'll send you the uh, corresponding uh, literature, but it can be done, not in this form, but in, in some other form. Okay, fine. So this uh, uh, brings us to the segue, end of the segue where we kind of parted and to the, to the different uh, route a uh, couple of classes back. So let me go back to from where we uh, took this deviation, right? So uh, we were discussing two port networks. <coughs> so what is essentially a two port network? It is a network we had, we initially started with a nonlinear network which was, and we said that there is some current voltage relationship. And the, under Poisson condition, we, we did an experiment or we figured out what is I1, what is I2, what is V1, what is V2 across these terminals. And we would like to figure out what is the, what, how do we, uh, how do we establish the relationships between I1, I2, V1, V2 in, in the incremental sense, right? If you have a nonlinear element inside the, inside the box, which, and assuming it's continuously differentiable and all those things, then we'll be able to, we should be able to find these derivatives. If we can find these derivatives, we should be able to figure out what is the relationship between the incremental elements and those relationship between the incremental elements will be perfectly linear, right? So that's what was, was, was the hypothesis. And then we saw that we were able to establish a relationship between the terminal voltages and, and currents. Okay. So, so now why is that linearity? I mean, why did the, uh, other than the fact that it, it, it helps in our ease of understanding of 
uh, of the network, there is one more reason we wanted, we would want to do this. And the reason is as follows. So let's assume that you have a network which is linear. Now consider this is a linear network, okay? This linear network. And I have a, somehow I applied a voltage V1 and a voltage V2 here. And I want to figure out <clears throat> what is the current that is going in, uh, going into the network I1 and I2, okay? So now that we have gone through all this, if you have to do it experimentally, what will you do? You will, you will attach two voltage sources, P1 in, in port one, one dash, and a V2 at port two, two dash, and then you will measure I1 and I2, right? Now, note that since this is linear, I can do use superposition, right? Linear superposition. So if I use superposition, what I will get? So I'll have two setups. In one setup, I will have this similar linear network. I will apply a voltage V1 and I will short the output, right? And I'll observe a current. And this current will be uh, I1 zero, let's say, because I have shorted the other terminal. Okay, and in the in the other setup, uh, I will short this, and I will apply V two here, right? Same linear network. And we'll figure out what is this current. Let me call this uh, I12. Okay, where I applied something on the second port. So what will be I1? I1 will be the summation of I10 and I12. So I10, since by virtue of this network being linear, I can say that I10 is some factor times V1 and the V1, I mean, this. since this is linear, I will not have any uh, square cube and all those terms. Similarly, uh, on the circuit on the right, I can say I12 will be some factor beta times V2, right? So I can say I1 will be equal to alpha times V1 times beta times V2, okay? Now, can you comment on what is this alpha? I mean, is there another name for this alpha? Pardon? Mm -hmm. Conductance, right? So how, how did I figure out what is I10? I had shorted the output port, shorted port two, and applied a voltage, I am taking the current that is going in. And I'm taking the ratio of I10 and V1. Alpha is the ratio, so alpha So alpha is essentially I10 or I10 by V1, or in other words, it is I1 by V1 under the condition that V2 equal to zero. Right? So do you know what this is called? Input conductance, right? This is called input conductance. And whenever you are in the conductance mode, you either use G or Y, right? So, so we call this Y11. Or if I just say cap, in the cap domain, this is Y11. This one one term, terminology is essentially uh, referring to the fact that I'm observing at one and the excitation has, has also been applied at port one, okay? And similarly, this Y, this, this one two, I one two, when I am saying, move this around a bit. So what is this beta by definition? The beta by definition is I one two by V two. Or simply I can say this is I Y one by V two under the condition of V one to be equal to zero, right? 
So this is what this is establishing a relationship between a current in one port for a, when I have applied a voltage at some other port, right? So this is this is a there is a transfer of characteristics that is happening. So we call it some transconductance, right? We are trying to this is beta is of the the unit of beta is one over ohm Siemens so conductance domain, right? Not not uh, not. Ohm's domain, not admittance, not impedance domain. So we call it, it has to be called some sort of conductance. And this is the transfer of relationship between one voltage <laughs> applied at one port and current observed at another port. So we call it transconductance, right? And since this transconductance thing is happening between, I have applied uh, the input at one, port two and I am uh, uh, observing at port one. So this beta we call it as y12. Okay. Or caps y12. So essentially, uh, this i1 generally is expressed in the form of i y. These are the terminologies that you see in literature. So we also try to stick together. So again, uh, what does this so when I say y12, what does this subscript mean? This subscript here, this second subscript means cause. And the first subscript is the effect. This is cause terminal. This is the effect terminal. Okay, the second subscript means that I have applied something there. Since I'm interested in y, y parameters, I know that. I must have applied a voltage at, in this case, at terminal two, and I was observing the current at terminal one. Now, it, it follows that I should be able to express the same for, for terminal two. And in this, this case, it will also be something proportional to V1 and V2, but the parameters will change, obviously. And what we, and the proportionally constant of, Let's start with the proportionally constant of V2. What do you think I will call this proportionally constant of V2? We'll call it Y22, obviously, because I have applied, I have applied a, a test voltage at terminal at port V2 and observing the current in that terminal under the condition that V1 is shorted. I have shorted V1, right? Otherwise, this term will not go to zero. So I have to short, I have to short uh, the other port in order to get y22 similarly uh, the coefficient of v1 we'll call it as y21 right so the cause terminal is terminal 1 and the effect terminal is terminal 2 so i have applied a voltage at terminal 1 and i'm observing at terminal 2 yes sir what is the rate for y1 what is the rate like class both of them are class so how is some class current that varies given in the problem? How will you describe y1 to y2? Oh, okay, okay. I understand what you are trying to say. That I just say that what is the, uh, the this is the transconductance. How will you know what is y1 to and y2? <laughs> so that also will be given, right? So there will be something. There will be n conditions given. I have to ask you to find the n minus plus one th condition, right? So so that generally how the problems are set. So, but uh, but anyhow. Uh, so if if this if if you buy into this idea, then you will naturally also buy into the idea that there is no reason why I should uh, I should set this network n up where v is the in, in, uh, independent source and independent uh, independent variable and i is the dependent variable. Rather, um, there is no reason for me to say that I will apply v and observe i. I can do the opposite. I can apply i and observe v. Right. So in that case. In that case, what will happen is these things will simply turn around. So in that case, my V1 will be something, some proportionally constant times I1 plus some proportionally constant times I2. Similarly, V2 will be this. And these we naturally call as Z11, Z12, Z21, and Z22. So quickly, can you tell me how will you, what is the definition of Z11 looking into this equation? 
but how will you let's say you are doing the setup how will you set it up v1 by i1 v1 by i1 under the condition that i2 equal to 0 right so i2 equal to 0 means open circuited right so this is open circuited open circuit port 2 so again y11 was i1 by v1 under the condition of v2 equal to 0 that is short circuit port 2 So can I say that Z Z one one and Y one one are reciprocal of each other? No. no, right? Because the conditions are not same. In one case I have open circuited, and in another case I have short circuited, right? So I would say do it yourself. Find out the condition. I mean, not now. Find out the relationship between Z one one and Y one one, right? Do it yourself later. So similarly, uh, okay. So now. Uh, so people do this y parameter z parameters business because as you can now when you write a set of linear equations you can see that i can express them in matrix forms right so if i take the y parameter matrix so i can express this this as i1 i2 will be equal to similarly i can express the z parameters matrix as so note that this this matrix is independent of whatever you have put in i1 and i2 this is a property of the network right so this is that's why i call this y parameters for network so this is z parameters for a network and one might naturally ask the question if we have one of the parameters why do i bother about the other right i should be able to solve everything by uh, by by knowing one of the parameters and you would be right you can solve everything using one of the parameters but sometimes it becomes a matter of convenience in in terms of uh, sometimes it becomes easier to evaluate certain types of circuits using one parameter than the other uh, as it turns out in uh, when we do when we deal with conductances and voltage as independent sources and currents as the dependent sources then naturally y parameters becomes the becomes the uh, parameters of choice but it need not necessarily be you can turn everything around and i can also write it everything in in in, in terms of z parameters okay now uh, do you know of any other types of parameters that people use there are s parameters there are uh, there is something very indigenously called uh, abcd parameters have you heard of it okay so so what is abcd parameters essentially uh you <laughs> so sometimes it becomes necessary to express the current i mean if i am only interested in the transfer relationship between the ports both for currents and voltages so sometimes it becomes necessary to express this in the form of v1 i1 is equal to some matrix times v2 minus i2 why minus i2 i am trying to figure out how much current the network is pushing out so that's why it, that's why it is expressed in terms of minus i2 and we call these as a b c d i think by the time i mean these games people ran out of ideas so you just call it a b c d uh so these type of uh, matrices are often useful if you have if you cascade multiple networks so you can simply uh, uh, as it turns out you can simply multiply these matrices and get the final transfer functions so so again um, part of detailed network theory courses will not go there but uh, we should we, we you should be aware of this 
So similarly, there are other parameters called H parameters, G parameters, T parameters, and so on. Uh, once you know how to deal with this, you, I mean, everything should be, uh, should be pretty straightforward. The parameter of choice in this course will be Y parameters. Because we mostly will be applying voltages and we'll be observing currents, and that is what uh, this Y parameters help us do. Okay, any questions? Okay, fine. So now that we, we have completed the prerequisites per se, so let's go back to our good old nonlinear network. And what did we say? We said that if we linearize this, if we linearize this, we'll end up with a linear network, right? This is incremental network of f of b. Then if I apply delta v1 or small v1, and I apply delta v2 or small v2, and I observe the currents I1 and I2, I should be able to express these relationship between I1 and V1 and I2 and V2 in terms of these matrices, right? And what will that be? It will be I1, I2 will be equal to some Y1, Y1, Y2, 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 where Y11 is what? Right, so this will be I1 by V1 when V2 is equal to zero, which means in terms of differentials, what will that be? So let me rewrite this. So let's say I1 is F1 of V1, V2 and I2 is F2 of V1, V2. So if, if this is the case, what will I replace I, uh, this, y, this I1 by V1 with in terms of the differentials of F1, F2? You can go back to your notes and tell me. Right, so it will be del I1, del V1, when? When V2 is constant, right? Small V2 is zero, means cap V2 is constant, right? Which means the operating point hasn't changed at the, at the output. The voltage is held constant, biases are held constant at the output problem. I have applied, an increment at the input terminal at the at, at across port one and one dash, but I have ensured that the bias is constant, right? Yes. If you are using path attack then it constant. Right. Right. But you are you are absolutely correct in the uh, when you are doing partial the assumption is that everything is constant, but we need to reinforce this time and again because you'll have to set the system up. So how do you set the system up? So in this case, if you have to do experimentally, what will you do? You, I mean, when you are experimenting with something, you will get, uh, you will not have only the incremental network, you'll have the total network, right? So you have to set the system up. Just because you are more comfortable in dealing with incremental network, the circuit will not modify itself, right? So you have to ensure that you give proper input to the circuit and set it up properly. And how do you set it up properly? You set it up properly because, I mean, not because how it, it's, you have to hold these voltages at the, across the port two constant, and you have to apply an increment across port one, one dash. And then you observe total V1, so total V1 will be, this is, it's a V1 and this is delta V, 
So total V1 will be V1 plus delta V, and the total current will be I1 plus delta I. The ratio of delta I over delta V will be your Y11. Okay. So this will be the setup to figure out what will be your Y1. Similarly, you'll have a setup to, uh, to figure out what will be Y12. What will be, how will you set up Y12? This is for the setup for Y11. So what will be your setup for Y12? So what will I do? Where, where should I apply the input? Okay, V1 should be constant. So again, so Y12 is I1 by small i1 by small v2. In other words, this is del i1, del v2, while v1 is constant. So v1 is constant. I'm applying an incremental input at port 2. And what am I observing? What am I observing? I1, I'm observing the current through port one, right? So, so this current maybe would have been I1. I should not, okay. So this I1, the other I1 obviously are not same because I have changed the system, changed the uh, inputs. So, but still let me call it I1 plus delta I. So your Y12 will be equal to this delta I by V2. Okay. Now, can you tell me if somebody asks me that, why am I only bothered about incremental delta I over delta V? I can always say that regardless of the network being linear or nonlinear, I can establish a relationship between the total I and the total V across the terminals also. I can, right? That is nobody that is stopping me from observing the total voltage and the total current and take the ratio. Three countries, I can do that, right? So obviously I can do that, but in that case, will these Y parameters model, Z parameters model be valid? Pardon? Why? Exactly. I mean, if I take the total I and the total V, I'll be able to establish a relationship, but I'll not be able to establish linearity. And because I'll not be able to establish linearity, linearity, I'll not be able to express my V1 and V2 in this form. I, if I have to do that, then I have to say that, or in this form, I have to say that there are additional terms of V1 squared, V2 squared, V1 Q, V2 Q. I have to take the full matrix, which will be a big one. And in that case, obviously, you don't have a square matrix anymore. And a square matrix are very useful because if you have done linear algebra, you know you can invert it easily. Right? So anytime you can invert a matrix easily, it becomes, a, uh, of, I mean, it becomes an extremely useful matrix. So that is why. Uh, circuit designers love to linearize everything so that you retain the linear term, use the concepts of linear algebra. And, and essentially, the entire CAD tool industry, right, where you design these, uh, uh, these simulators, cadence, LP spice, whatever, um, synopsis, these companies, billion dollar companies, are essentially based on inversion of matrices. Okay, so how do you make this? You can understand, obviously, we will not have small two by two matrices. If you have a network which has a billion transistors or million transistors, you have to invert that big size matrix and you have to do it within a matter of seconds because when you click a button, as you, you expect the output to come instantaneously, right, in a simulator. So that has to be optimized. Obviously, you cannot then just simply invert. There are, there are optimization processes to invert these, uh, these matrices so as to do it quickly without, uh, without uh, losing accuracy. So that is essentially one of the areas where, uh, one of the offshoots of the areas of electrical engineering where the CAD tool industry is, is based on. Okay, so that essentially falls, I mean, if, if you are interested into going into CAD and simulation based things, you have to be good at linear algebra, obviously numerical I mean, numerical analysis and some part of circuit design also. Okay, so again, again an offshoot, we are not going there, we are more interested in using these concepts for our, uh, uh, we are more interested in using, using these concepts to ease our way of analyzing circuit going forward. Yes. Uh, 
Ah, huh, okay. So if I do that, if I do that, I will obviously. I uh, what what will I do? I I can get a table, right? I can get a table of total I and total B. So, but what is the need of that table? That will that table give you a linear relationship between the column on the right and the column on the left? It will not give you right because it's not the relationship is not linear. The relationship between the total I and the total B will not be linear. You can have an Excel where on the left you have all the voltages, on the right you have all the currents, but the relationship between the I and D will not be linear. It will be a nonlinear relationship, which means you cannot express it in this form. If you cannot express it in this form, no square matrix, you cannot invert it. We assume linearity. We assume linearity. We assume linearity, and, and and the typical it is y parameters, z parameters always assume linearity, and because you can assume linearity, you can short one, open one, and do superposition, and that's why you have two, you have two ports, you have two conditions, add them up, you have two by two matrices. Right? Okay, fine. Uh, we'll stop here. We'll meet on Monday.